Today, I'm going to run you through a series of assessments that you can do to monitor your recovery following a stroke. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to explain how to set up and carry out three practical assessments for yourself, your partner, or even if you're an instructor who has a client that has suffered a stroke. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice, and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. In the aftermath of suffering a stroke, your priority is likely to be to get some sort of quality of life back. The assessments I'm going to run through are the options we use in our exercise after stroke program delivered by exercise specialists. Obviously, there are many other assessments that neurophysiotherapists, occupational therapists and speech therapists would use, but the three we will take an in-depth look at in this video each gauge your functional ability to carry out activities of daily living. They are the timed up and go, the timed 10 meter walk and the sit to stand test. Before I run through each of these practical assessments though, I want to briefly explain a psychological assessment that we do to get an understanding of how a client feels that they are recovering from their stroke. Everyone is affected differently by their stroke. Some will have physical impairments and others may have cognitive impairments. But the importance of this assessment is to relate the recovery from the effects of the stroke to them. We use a straight line with a zero at one end that represents the point of your stroke when you were most affected, through to a 10 at the other end, which represents what would, would be a full recovery from your stroke, where you feel that you're then back to normal. I would ask you to mark a cross on the line that best represents where you feel that you are right now, and we would date that mark for future reference. After a period of three months where you have been exercising in a stroke class, in the gym, swimming pool or at home, we would ask you to do the same again and mark a cross on the line based on how you feel that you've recovered. And again, mark a date with it too. We can then compare the results with the first assessment to see if any progress has been made. In some cases, people don't always feel that they've moved forwards because their perception of their ability changes and in their mind, they may have changed the goalposts to where they want to get. But this does help as a psychological barometer for progression and helps build a discussion for setting realistic goals. The timed up and go is a great functional assessment as it combines the ability to stand from a seated position, walk a short distance to a point, and then turn around and walk back to your chair and sit back down. To carry out this assessment, you will need a chair against a wall, which will be your start point, and a marker three meters away from the front of the chair to walk around. Ideally, this would be a second chair so that you have the chance to hold onto the back of it for balance purposes as you walk around it and change direction. But this can be a cone or other marker on the floor. If you're setting this assessment up at home, just make sure that you do it on a flat surface with plenty of space that's free from obstacles and that you have a way to measure the three meter distance from the front of the start chair to the marker. You will also need someone with a stopwatch to measure your time in completing the test. Before starting, it's important that you have decided whether or not to use any aids in the assessments. This can be a walk-in stick or frame, your functional electrical stimulation box or FES if you have one, an ankle foot orthosis or AFO if you have one to prevent foot drop or anything else you think you'll need to negotiate the assessment. Remember, whatever you choose to use or not use must be duplicated again for the second assessment in the future to capture better results with fewer variables. This also means that the type of chair that you use and the marker for the turn must also be the same for any future assessments. Once you're ready, start in a seated position on the chair against the wall and as soon as you begin to start the movement to stand up, the timer will start. You then walk to the chair or marker three meters away and you can walk around it either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on your preference. Once you've walked around the chair or marker, you then walk straight back to the chair against the wall and sit down at which point the timer will stop. 
Record the time for the test to the nearest tenth of a second. I've had some people complete this test very quickly in around 15 seconds, like my client did here, and I've also had others that have taken more than two minutes to complete this task. However, the time is irrelevant on the first attempt because you'll be recording the time down along with the date so that you can attempt it again after three months to check your progress with the aim of doing it faster. You will also find that those people that take longer to complete will often take off huge chunks of time on their reassessment, whereas those that are faster may only take off a few tenths of a second. To improve your time, try and move swiftly from a seated to standing to walking without any pauses, but always be careful with your balance and negotiating the turn around the marker by having a good awareness of your foot placement, especially if using a chair. A tip is also to make sure that if your stroke has left you with a weakness on one side, then it's safer to negotiate the turn with this side on the outside of your turn so your stronger hand can grab the back of the chair if necessary. For example, if your stroke had affected your right side, then you would choose to walk around the chair or marker counterclockwise so your left side is closest to the marker when you turn. The time 10 meter walk is a good test to measure your speed that you are walking to see if your walking ability is improving. To do this test, you will need a larger space so that you can walk in a straight line for 14 meters. This allows for a two meter acceleration zone at the start and a two meter deceleration zone at the finish. So your time spent walking the 10 meters is at your full pace. You then mark out the 10 meter distance like on this diagram here using cones or other sort of markers on the ground. These markers are used to start and stop the time as you walk through them. If you're doing this at home, it's important that you have a space so that you are able to walk in a straight line for the 10 meter distance, so you can work out your walking speed and not have to change direction like we did with the timed up and go. Again, as with the last test, make sure the space is free from any hazards. You make a note of any walking aids that you will use and that you have someone else to help you time your test. Once you're set up, Start a couple of meters back from the first set of cones and have your person timing your test close to you. As you build up your pace, the time starts as soon as you walk through the first set of cones and stops at the point you walk through the second set of cones. By having the person timing you walk alongside you during the test, it's easier to ensure that they start and stop the timer at the correct point. As before, record the time to the nearest tenth of a second. Again, some people like my client did here will complete the task in around 10 seconds if they are functioning physically at a higher level, whereas others may take two to three minutes to do the 10 meter distance. To improve your time, try to increase your stride length first. This is the distance between each step rather than the frequency or cadence of your steps. Another tip is to try and look forward while you walk towards the end rather than looking down at your feet and to get a heel strike for every step. The final practical assessment is the sit to stand. This is more of a lower limb muscular strength and endurance test to monitor your ability to move from a seated to a standing position continuously. There are a number of ways that you can do this test, but two variations are generally used for stroke survivors depending on your ability. You can either time yourself to complete 10 sit to stands and then try and improve on the time, or if completing 10 sit to stands seems like an impossible task, you can see how many sit to stands you can manage in a 30 second period. This one is simple to set up as you only need a chair, but it needs to be sturdy enough so that it doesn't move around during the test and also one that isn't too low or soft. Therefore, when seated, your hips should be level with or raised slightly higher than your knees. Ideally, we would want participants to complete this task without using their hands or arms to help them get up but for a lot of stroke survivors, this is difficult. Therefore, if you need to use the armrests or a stick or other aid to help you get up to a standing position, make sure this is recorded when you're taking the result. You can always try carrying out this test from a higher seated position, such as the side of an armchair like I'm demonstrating here. To set yourself up, start seated on the front half of your chair so you're not using the back support. Make sure your feet are flat on the floor, about hips width wide, and ensure that they are not staggered. This is to stop you relying fully on your dominant leg while carrying out the movement. 
Keeping the toes in line will ensure that you even your weight distribution between both feet. If you're doing the 30 seconds, then the person timing will tell you when to start as they start the stopwatch and they will count the number of completed repetitions. A repetition is counted when you get back down to a seated position each time. At the 30 second time frame, the timer will tell you to stop and record the number of completed repetitions. If you are able to do 10 or more, then the person recording the time will tell you when to begin and start the stopwatch and stop it when you've completed the 10th repetition. To make sure that the test is carried out correctly, the person timing should ensure that each time you stand, you are fully upright, so you're not leaving your hips back behind you. They should also check that the feet or toes stay in alignment. When it comes to assessing stroke survivors and prescribing exercise to aid the recovery, there are two trains of thought. One is to allow the person to carry out the task in any way they can, which could be with poor form so they work around their impairments, allowing for more freedom of movement but at a cost of potentially causing other joint related issues. The other is to be strict with the technique, making sure they do everything by the book, which is far more restrictive and frustrating, but may lead to a better corrective response to the impairments. If you're a stroke survivor, which train of thought do you think is best for you to aid your recovery? Let me know in the comments section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video today and can take something away from it. If so, then please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share this video with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.